Are they better than you? Are they more resourceful? Because it's it is never a lack of resources, by right. the way. It is almost always a lack of resourcefulness. Yeah. Real business and real business and real. Whatever your situation is currently is not your forever situation. That's really what real business owners is, man. Like we don't care where you come from, yeah. where are you going? Our goal and our job is to reduce the mistakes that you have to make or the money that you have to lose. You want to be an entrepreneur, you want to be successful, don't give up. You learn, adjust, and continue to move forward. Welcome back to the Real Business Owners Podcast. This is episode 142 with myself, Trevor Cowley. As always, Kel Goodman. What's up, everybody? Guys, today uh, we have the pleasure to have one of the OG legends on the show. Uh, I would say when we started the podcast, you know, you were one of the guys that we had on our hit list. I love it, You man. know, to have on mm -hmm. the podcast. And so... One, that's a lesson just right off the bat. You know, write the people down that you want to do business with. Amen. Write the people down <laughs> that you want to have on your podcast. It's not going to happen overnight, but eventually it'll happen because it's going to be top of mind for you year after year, and you're going to slowly, subconsciously work towards that goal. Have right? to start with the end of mind, right? Guys, we have Kent Clothier on the phone, or on the phone, on the <laughs> podcast today. Um, this man is been uh, uh, an individual that we've looked up to for years and years, not just in business, but in all buckets of life. It seems, I don't know how long you've had it figured out, and I'm not saying you have everything figured out, nobody's perfect, but it seems like you, you, you know, you've got a lot of check marks in some of the right areas, whether you're talking about family, whether you're talking about business, and this guy's multifaceted. You know, it's not just business, it's real estate, there's different investments that, I mean, you, you hit all the check marks in making money too, which is what's really cool. So let's, let's talk a little bit about your journey. Where did your entrepreneurship journey even start? Um, well, first off, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. I appreciate oh, you. Yeah. Our pleasure. Um, yeah, no doubt. I will tell you that, you know, I, I have been an entrepreneur from the word go. Um, literally, I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. I was, I was raised a little different than most. And my, my parents got divorced when I was very, very young. And I ended up living with my father, who was a uh, entrepreneur through and through, right? So I got to see it firsthand. I had a front row seat to building businesses, to seeing exactly how it's done, watching the struggles, watching him go through bankruptcy, watching him build. And you still wanted to do it <coughs> after I all mean, that? I, I just didn't know. And well, it wasn't just the the watching and the, and the demonstrating. It was the the messaging that I was mm. been hearing my entire life. Good isn't good when great is expected, right? Like I can remember the it's just was pounded into me. And I was just all, some of those one liners. Yeah, I was ultimately always, stuck with you. always expected to perform at a high level, whether that was in school, whether that was which I didn't do, by the way. Um, <laughs> it was ex but, yeah, but, but certainly, some expectations you don't yeah, meet. You certainly know? at sports, certainly at um, in business. Um, and so, you know, at a very young age, I mean, I knew I can as clearly as we're sitting here right now, I can remember that I would knew for a fact that you I would, would be always successful. be a CEO. I would always be successful. Mm -hmm. I would always control my own destiny. Well, whatever you want to say. Did you ever, did you end up going to school or did right out of high school? Did you start your, I went to one semester at the university of Memphis and I was making too much money in my other business to take it even seriously. I mean, I was, when I, my freshman year in, and uh, college, I already owned my own house. I was driving around in a mm. brand new Corvette, making lots of money doing what I wanted to do. And I knew for a fact I did not want to be in school. Was and that real estate? No, that was in the grocery industry. I was, uh, we were in the grocery arbitrage business. Basically, we were buying and selling truckloads of groceries mm. and uh, effectively flipping trucks. So yeah. we, would, we would find, we would find where uh, a manufacturer was selling a product like this, you know, whatever this energy drink is here, where they were the manufacturer selling this by the truckload into the San Diego market for $40 a case. And there's a thousand cases on a truck. So 40 grand, we would find that and find where this was being sold in other markets like New York city, but they were selling it for $70 a case. And that little inefficiency in the market, that mm. gap that our, opportunity for that. arbitrage, we would go into the market and say, Hey, you guys, you know, you're buying this for $40 a case. By the time it goes through the stores, by the time you stock the shelves, by that, you're going to make like 25 cents a mm. case on this shit, right? Why don't I just give you $50,000 right now? I'll buy it all right out the back of the door. 
put it on a truck and we would ship it up to New York City and sell it up to them <laughs> for sixty five thousand dollars a truck, which they were all too happy to pay because they were yeah. they were paying seventy. That's a discount. Yeah. And that twenty five grand spread, whatever it is, we would we that's that was our margin. Mm. We pay for the trucking. We you know have to carry carrying costs on some money, but that little business that you know. My father and I started when, when I was 17 years old. By the time wow. I was 23, was doing $50 million a year. Wow. And, you know, ultimately by the time I was 28, we were doing $800 million a year. By the time I was 30, you know, I was running a almost $2 billion a year business oh doing exactly that. Yeah. I remember so, hearing your story that you built a, a, a billion dollar company before, but I didn't know it was that. That's yeah. really cool. That's what it was. I Which, was, it was not in real estate. So my, yeah. my twenties were very different than most. I mean, my, you know, that's what I wanted to ask. Like, Doing something like that in your 20s, what were some of the lessons that you extracted? Were you just so busy and so focused on the business that you didn't really have a personal life? Was there any yeah, balance? Yeah, that's exactly or? what it was. Like, yeah. Because you don't have, um, you know, I had nothing to model. I, yeah. I was, all I was doing was being rewarded for a lot of hard work, a lot of effort, a lot of energy, um, making a ton of money. Like I said, when, you know, all my friends... Uh, left high school and went to go to college. Yeah. And there was a certain part of me that was a little, little envious of that. If I'm yeah. being completely kind of watching the partying, yeah. the fun stuff. And I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't yeah, doing yeah. any of that stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, but you know, I, they all came back from college and they went to work for one dude. And that was me, mm. <laughs> which I thought was kind of interesting. Right. They, they left and they turned around and they came back and suddenly, they went to school to go work for you. Yeah. They went <laughs> yeah. to school to yeah. go learn, to figure out how to work for the guy that didn't go to school. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> so that was one lesson. And so then I look up, you know, and I, we had a, a much larger competitor by our company uh, when I was 25 or 26, and they moved me down to Boca Raton, Florida from Memphis, Tennessee, and effectively threw me the keys of this much bigger company. Like, hey, we're doing $800 million a year. We want you to run it mm -hmm. at 26, 27 years old. Um, and I was extremely naive. I was courageous. I was kind of just ignorant to the fact. I was just going to say, were you like, yeah, let's do it. Just yeah. Get, I mean, yeah. I just didn't know any better. I was yeah. like, I, I haven't failed yet. Why would I fail here? Right. I mean, mm. that, and that's a, it's a very, very powerful place to be wow. mentally. Right. And we forget that. I mean, it's always, it's always cool when you look back and you remember, man, when I was a kid and the world hadn't gotten to me and friends and family and yeah. media hadn't beat the shit out of me that all of a sudden I look up and, uh, you know, I, I believed I could do anything. Yeah. And because I believe that, I made it real, right? I mean, they threw, I look back, I can remember when I turned 40 years old. So the guys that own that company, when they, when they effectively, figuratively kind of threw the keys to me, they were each 42 years old. At 42 years old, when I'm running my companies today, there's not a 26 year old that I know that I would have that trusted. Could, oh my God. My, <laughs> right? that's, that's why I'm like so drawn in on so the story. I'm like, who the hell gave you the keys? So the simple fact that I, that they looked at me and saw in me what they saw wow. uh, to the point of trusting me effectively to do this uh, speaks volumes about who they were and ultimately, I guess, who I was at that yeah. point. And it works out because, you know, fast forward three years later, that $800 million year company was now doing $1.8 billion. And I look at a lot of the things that we put in place. Uh, a lot of it be was because I was naive. As yeah. far as I was concerned, um, I didn't care what we were doing. Uh, I was looking at it like good isn't good and great yeah. is expected, right? Like, we're way too comfortable. What, what the hell are we doing? Let's figure out Move. a different way. Go, yeah. go, go. Yeah. And we... Uh, uh, effectively completely revamped the organization um did an entire thing of starting the business where that business was driven off of was very supply driven <clears throat> and what i mean by that if you think about a lot of business models including real estate it's um supply and demand somebody comes in and says hey i've got a house to sell and they go to and they effectively entertain offers and then whoever gets that now they're just keep on passing it down the line and I basically came into the grocery business, so that, that particular business that was doing a lot of buying hundreds of hundreds of trucks every, every month. But the moment that the, that that grocery store, that distributor would offer that truck, they wouldn't just offer it to us, right? So they would mm. say, hey, I have this truckload of Heinz ketchup. And they would call me and my five competitors and say, effectively, What's the deal? who wants to give me the most for this? Mm. Now, ironically, we were also all calling the exact same customers to sell it to. Yeah. So it's like, 
who wants to pay the most yeah. and who wants to take the least. So we're just, everybody's just trying to squeeze each yeah. other out. Yeah, it's a race yeah. to zero. Yeah. And so I basically came at it and said, how about we just go ask all of our customers if I could sell you anything in any quantity delivered on any day at any price, tell me what you want. And we would get these, I mean, mountains of data from our customers. I want to buy 27 trucks of Heinz. I want to buy 10 mm. trucks of, you know, of toilet paper. I want to buy 15 trucks of water. I mean, and, but then we would just go backwards. So while everybody else was fighting over this yeah. one truck, yeah. we're over there. Hey, go get me this. Go get me this. Go get me this. Go get me this. You knew exactly what yeah. your and, audience wanted. And because we sent them down the path to go get it, mm. naturally, we just, there was no competition. It's just going to come back to me because I drove this and it only added a billion dollars a year to what the company. Were, well, that's what the power of saying? asking questions, right? What were we just saying the other day? We were like, dude, we need just more data to grow our business. Like so, yeah. so many people are out there just like hustling and grinding and they're trying to figure all these things out and they're just throwing shit at the wall and they're winging it. Yeah. It's like, bro, take the time to actually look at the data. Yeah. Well, you the, know? the like, irony is, is that when I got in that, so I left that company March 14th of 2000, which we can come back to and talk in a minute. But when I, when I got into, um, the real estate business, I was taught how to go wholesale houses, which is effectively go get a deal under contract and then just flip the Be contract. The middleman, yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. And when I've turned it into a business, I used the exact same process. Mm -hmm. All I did was I went and found the data and said, show me everybody in my market who is paying all cash for a deal because now I'm in my, I'm like, if they're paying all cash, they're probably investors. Yeah. Right there. I don't have any interest in just selling a deal. I want to sell a lot of deals. I got all this data and then introduced myself, figured out how to get them to call me. Suddenly I had 25 guys and girls that all wanted to buy 50 houses from me at a very specific price in a very specific neighborhood at, a, you know, all the amenities, but I'm light years ahead of my competition right mm. there because now all I have to do is fulfill the is order. Go generate that. Yeah. And so while everybody else is, running up and down the streets. Hey, I got a house. Look at, I, I'm like, no, oh, I, I don't got, even, I, I'm not even playing your game. Yes. Right. And so people ask me how these businesses have exploded is because I start with the end in mind. Mm. I understand exactly. And that would be the lesson. Right. Yes. So when I came through that, I was like, it's really powerful uh, to really start with a destination in mind. And I have, but I, then map I've out how it. to get there by yeah. asking the well, questions to e your customers. It's much and, easier yes. to know how to get to a destination if you actually have a destination. Correct. Right? I mean, Absolutely. if you think about just coming over here to my office today, yeah, as something as simple as that. I mean, you put it in a GPS and you get turn-by-turn -turn directions. What yeah. we didn't do is, hey, guys, show up at my office. Um, just show up at my office. Good I'm luck. not going to give you an address. I'm in Bird Rock, in La Jolla. You know, look for my name on a door, and yeah. I'm sure you'll find it, yeah. right? That, that, that would be the definition of insanity. But that people, would be the definition of the average human being yeah, on the but planet. But everybody yeah. does that exact same thing with business and their life. Yep. yep. But do. something as simple as driving. I'll give you another one. Something as simple as going to the grocery store. Think about these simple decisions that we do not do without a definition of success in mind. Like we know if I'm going to go to the grocery store, I'm getting this and this and this and this, that is success. And then I come back, happy wife, happy and wife. And if you don't, if, but, if, but if, if, if you don't have a list, you're less likely to get a hundred percent of the things that you wanted when you went to the grocery store. Well, I, if you're just, if, if you're trying to have it memorized or you think that you know what you're well, trying I, to do. I'll give you one even worse, bro. And what about, I mean, just think about how insane it sounds. If I, if my wife says, hey, can you grab a few things at the grocery store? And I don't ask any questions. And I just walk up and down the aisles and grab some shit, 25 so, yeah. different things and yeah. come to the house <laughs> and dump it on the counter. It's like, is any of this shit what you wanted? Yeah. Right? I mean, the chances of success there are almost zero, right? Absolutely. And But people do it all the time with business. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to grab a little bit of this. You know, give me a little bit of short sales. Give me a little REOs. I'll give try me a little this, flips. Dabble, I'm going to try dabble, this. Dabble, I'm going to try dabble, that. Yeah. I, I'll know success. When I, that is such horseshit. That is not the way. Well, the reason why they're all over the place is because they don't have the end in this mind. This is my point. Be, be, they don't, they, it's that So they're, you're, you're all over. Close it off. Yeah. Get, into, get into a zone. Get into a focus. This Understand what, what you're trying to do. success looks like. I want to be here. This is where I want to be the way I want to live my life. You know, I want to live on the ocean. I want my how or my office to be right down the street. I want to walk my little girl to school. I want to be able to walk to restaurants. I want to be able to do whatever I want to do that. 
work out I know, work right out here right in here the back office. of your office. I yeah. know what success looks like. Yeah. And therefore, it's much easier for me to actually take the turn by turn directions to get there. And well, the, the, the funny thing is, is even prior to getting on the podcast, we talked about, you know, I mean, the average entrepreneur thinks that there's big things that they have to do in order to be successful. Everybody's doing all of the big things. Prior to hopping on, we talked about it's always just the little shit, the minute shit. Mm -hmm. Like we're all still showing up every day operating our businesses, but there's a handful of people that are doing that minute thing called writing their goals down, playing the end game where they have far more of a roadmap to get where they're trying to go. And it's not that, like, I, I think people don't do it because they don't believe it's that easy right. or that simple. And it's the minute things that can make the biggest difference in life, in business, Quit looking for the massive changes. Start changing just those minor, well, minor things. I, I can tell you why people, <clears throat> I've been doing this a long time, right? And, I, and I've been around a lot of people, helped a lot of people, coached a lot of people. The reason why people believe it is big things because it gives them a, an excuse to not do it. Absolutely. It's the it's the crutch. It's easier to talk themselves out of not following through if they right. believe that if it's, it's this difficult. big, massive thing, then it then it then they can have that that seductive conversation with themselves that pulls them back into mediocrity and like, Oh man, well, it's big. I can't do that today. I don't or they don't feel as that. bad about quitting and know, giving I up. Can't, I can't really get there today. Yeah. I got to do this. And Where if they realize that it's small, simple, mm. applicable things they have to do each and every day, they actually have to hold, they can hold themselves accountable to it and they can actually get it done. And therefore they, they have to be intentional yeah. and do that. If you can, you know, you paint the big, oh my God, I want to be a billionaire kind of conversation and there's no action, no plan behind it. It's super easy to just say, yeah, I'll get to it later. We'll be like, yeah. I don't know. This is the one thing you have to do today. And there's going to be another one tomorrow. And that there's, there's much more, um, what's my look? There's much more, there's much more actionable things that they actually have to do. I mean, there's things they act, think steps they actually have to take each and every day to your point. And so therefore it requires, yeah. You know, discipline yeah. and that doesn't feel good. They that's such a good point. That's, that's yeah. you know, spot on. And 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 even just the minute things of how you start your day, the first five or ten minutes, mm -hmm. you can control a lot about your life and the way that you feel about yourself in terms of how you start and how you finish your days. Amen. Right. And it's not that big of a deal. It doesn't have to be three hours in the morning of meditating or yeah. three hours in the, like ten minutes, yeah. fifteen minutes in the morning. My, my morning routine is is writing. Do you know how much money we make just off of email copy that we put out? You know what right. I mean? It's like, and it, and but it, I, you know, that's something I want to get better at. So it's part of my morning routine, but it's also one of the most productive things I do all day long. Right. And it takes literally 10, 20 minutes, you know? Well, you said a word earlier and then you corrected yourself, which I, I want to, you know, recognize because it's, you, you hit it perfectly. Um, it's not easy. Yeah. But it is simple. Yes. Right. It's not easy. But it is simple. Yeah. It is. And there's a lot of money to be made out in the world today to make things, to make people believe things are complex. But we all know differently, right? Yeah. The reality of this is this is a very simple process. It's not easy. Yeah. But you have to be disciplined. You have to do the small things. Humans make it right. difficult. Every single day. And then it turns it, the compound effect of that over time turns into um, the outcome that you're looking for are certainly the evolution of you as a human being yeah. that you're looking for, which ultimately will produce the outcome. Right? Absolutely. Well, I think so many people get tied up in the, the outcome, right? In other words, I want to yeah. you know, do this or this or this. And the reality of it is, is the little things, the small things we're talking about and the person that you become in doing those things yeah. is really the, is, is, yeah. the, it's not, yes. is the success. Yes, 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 yes. It's not easy to be great. You know, it takes time, but doing those simple things every single day is what. That's right. You, you become, be you become the person that you, uh, you certainly become a better version of yourself, right. which 100%. in and of itself is success. Yeah. Well, and, and, and if it happened too quick, I think that that, that's a, that does you a disservice. In some cases you have to go through those trials and tribulations I mean, I mean, it did to be worthy of the individual that can eventually turn an $800 million company into a $2 billion well, company. Look, I mean, I, I'm there, sure there, there was a lot there of, was a lot of that. things that, that when I was in my twenties and this was going down, um, I was the guy getting to the office at five o'clock in the morning, right? I was the guy leaving eight o'clock at night and I, I was there all day on Saturdays. I took so much pride. Ward is a badge of honor. 
that, that nobody's going to outwork you. Nobody's going to outwork me. Nobody's going to out hustle me. I'm going to get my, you know, and I would sit, you know, do that little whispering in my ear. Oh, I'm doing this for my family. All the con job bullshit we tell ourselves. And the re reality was, is I was doing it at the expense of my family. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it was no wonder that, uh, my, my high school sweetheart and myself, when we were married, right? We were married for six years, but we got divorced while I was yeah. going through that, right? My young son hardly knew me, and it was um, extremely painful. So then when I walked out of there on March 14th, all pissed off and fired up and, and thought that I would, you know, deserved better than I was being treated. Um, it, the next two years were devastating to me, mm. right? I mean, I lost everything, literally yeah. lost everything I'd ever worked my, my life uh, for. Financially, financially, spiritually. Yeah. I mean, I was just a, I was a shell of myself. Yeah. I was, I mean, I, I didn't do, I never been a, a drug guy, never been a, a, uh, alcohol guy. So it wasn't drugs, alcohol, women. It was nothing like that. It was just, your addiction, I thought was, your addiction I, I, was work. Yeah. I thought I was a better businessman than I was. And so when I walked out of there, I believed it would be very simple for me to go start a competitor and get right back in the game and get going. And so I started, but quickly figured out that uh, a lot of my success had to do with the people around me, uh, mm -hmm. uh, much more than, than it had to do with me. And that was extremely humbling. And I was nowhere near as good as I thought I was. Made sim simple, bad decisions, made a bad acquisition, got hooked for uh, millions of dollars in receivables that uh, I'm you know, on the line for, you mm -hmm. know, um, that were all bad. Yep. And so I had to, t had to, should have filed, should have put the company in bankruptcy. Didn't, uh, cause I had too much pride. So you yeah. kept throwing <laughs> too much pride. Yeah. I, I paid it all off personally instead of, cause I didn't want, I didn't want that black mark on my name. Right. Yeah. And, but all of those lessons, um, you know, I, I never thought I would look back on losing everything as the greatest gift ever given to me, but it was, yeah, I was going right? to ask I mean, that. It was, yeah. it was, we wouldn't be here today if, if, if the power that of, hadn't happened absolutely. to me. The power of lows, like in, yeah. in life in general, it's very those hard are the most powerful moments. And this is where I was going with what you were talking about earlier. It's very hard to appreciate the light without the dark, yes. right? And so yes. up to that point, I'd always I'd been nothing but light. I was the golden boy. Mm. Everything I touched turned to gold. We were, I mean, you named it. If Kent was involved, we were crushing, right? Uh, I was the guy in, in this entire industry. It's an industry, multi-billion dollar industry. And there's not one person that did not know who I was. Like I said, being rewarded, the accolades, the money, the you name it. The right? recognition. Recognition. Yeah. Every every box was being checked. And so to lose all that was mm -hmm. a devastating. You, were lo you lost your identity. Every bit of it. Yeah. Because 1, that's, what, yeah, that's who you were 1, in the eyes percent. of everybody. And then that's who you wanted to be in front of the. No you know, doubt. You played into that role was, to the point when it was taken from you. You didn't even know who you 1, were. 1,000%. And yeah. had to go do that. It was brutal. The, yeah, it I was bet. brutal. It how, was, how long ago was it? That was uh, 2000. 2000 until December of 2002. So it took me roughly 22 months to lose everything. Yeah. Right. Let me ask you this. What, like, be, being at a low, low place like that, because I'm sure there's somebody listening right now. There, Maybe it's a restaurant that got hit with COVID and, you know, or whatever. I don't like using that as an excuse. There are a couple industries that did get harder than others. Obviously, they need to, to learn how to pivot, but if they're still kind of hanging on by a thread, what were some of the lessons that you extracted from the lowest point to where you kind of had to rebuild yourself, rebuild your confidence, your identity the, the, over a two year period to kind of get back in the fight? Look, again? over, over that two years, um, you know, I was fighting and I was fighting, yeah. fighting hard. And ultimately, you know, it, uh, finally broke me. I mean, I was in a, I had lost every dollar. So you're uh, trying to hang on to your ego as long as you yeah, could throughout I, that I, two I years. I finally lost everything. I was in a wildly desperate situation, entertaining all your worst fears, was suicidal, was massively mm. depressed. It was, it was the, like I said, the worst thing that, that I'd ever gone to. I wouldn't put it on my, my worst enemy today. But uh, what I learned once you gain distance from it is things, and this is cliche, but I'm going to say it anyway because it's just true. Things don't happen to you, they happen for you. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. I needed that humbling. I, I was in a place where uh, I had become very jaded. I didn't understand struggle. Struggle, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I understood success. I didn't understand struggle. There's no lessons in success. Yeah. All, the, all the best gems are in the struggle. Right. Yeah. And so knowing, ultimately, looking back, that that, that was a huge blessing in my life mm -hmm. that I never thought I would frame that way 
uh, help me to frame moving forward all struggle. Mm. Like when things get tough for me, I'm it. It's made me who I am today. Like I, you embrace it. I you embrace it. it. I understand that because, what's going to happen on yes, the other side of it. Yes. Like I have what it takes. Yes. This does, this does not define me. What I do next, how I react to this, that does define the me. response. Absolutely, right? Is the definition. the response yes. is the definition, mm-hmm. right? If I roll up in a ball and, and play the role of a victim, I get to be that guy. Yep. I get to I get to live that life. Now, if I be a warrior and I don't have any problems fall, falling down, I have no problem fi- failing. I have no problem filing for bankruptcy and starting all over. Whatever that look, I don't care. I literally don't care. The yeah. freedom of not caring is massive. Mm. Like, I simply don't give a shit. I, because one thing's for sure, I will 1,000% leave it on the field. I will play full out. So if I fall down or fail or lose it all in that headspace, I'm just fine with that. What I won't allow to happen is I am not going to sit there and play the role of the victim. I am here because of decisions I've made every single day and I have to own my outcome. I, I, you know, I was the one that walked out of that, that, that business. I was the one that started the new business. I was the one that bought the company with the bad receivables. I, I'm not a victim. I did that. Dude, that's that's a hundred percent accurate. I mean, a lot of people think things are happening, like you said, to them. The real question is, is how can you take ownership of the situation so you never put yourself in the same situation again, even if it was somebody else that kind of affected you in a negative way? You still put yourself in a situation around that individual, right? Whether it's an employee that made a mistake, yes, you can go reprimand the employee or whatever it is. Did you train them proper? Right. Did, like start turning inward and asking yourself questions. Well, what could I have done to, to make that outcome different? Even if you made the outcome happen, I still employed you. I should have gave you the tools that you needed to it perform goes, at a high level. It goes both ways. If you yes. think about it like this, if, if you imagine one day you're going to be sitting on top of the world, things are going to be going great, right? There's zero doubt that if you were embracing that moment, that you would be sitting there saying, work my ass off, man. I yeah. deserve this. Yeah. I deserve this. The exact same tr- is true when you're at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Mm. I made these decisions. I'm responsible for this. I put myself you're deserving here. I of deserve all. to be exactly yeah. where I am. Yeah. Every day, by the way. I deserve to be exactly based upon the decisions based that you on made every prior. decision I made up to today. Yes. I deserve to be where I am today. Yeah. And you cannot outrun your decisions. You cannot outrun your outcome. This is like, if you're struggling, your outcome is your outcome. Yeah. You need to understand this is where you are because of decisions you've made. Mm. And that's the first step in understanding how to make better decisions, how to improve circumstances, how to get in, you know, you cannot sit there and, play the role of a victim yeah. because that mentality feeding into you takes away all your yes. power and people never know they're, they're not aware of it until they're aware of it. Right. But that really is the only way out of it is self accountability. I mean, you, yeah. you have to take ownership. Every Own your single day. I'm yeah. here, man. I, I, I know what I did. I understand what I did. Uh, I will definitely not try to do it again. Yeah. It's but, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, but, but the, the, it's not so much about the decision. Let me tell you, it's about the mentality. Yeah. What happens is Correct. the moment Correct. that you Correct. own the outcome. Now, now what's happening in that, des- that moment is you're giving yourself power. There's yeah. power in negative yeah. situations. There's power in positive situations, I have it period. Like, yeah. I did this. And so that if I did this, I also have the power to do something about it. Right. And that's, that was a Victims massive. are saying they didn't have any power in the result. Well, let's be clear. There are real victims in the world. Sure. In all likelihood, Absolutely. if you're listening to this podcast, you're not fucking one of them. Right. Yeah. Right. That's true. Right. You're walking around with a, with a, you know, a, an iPhone or an Android hooked up to your ear. You're watching this on YouTube on some laptop or an iPad. You're probably not a victim. You're a victim mentality. Right. You know, if your life's not good. Yeah. If you're thinking that you lost something because of someone else's fault, if you can't take ownership, if things just aren't going the way they should be going in your life, you're just not on that path of all, you're not feeling happiness. You're probably victim mentality. Well, even, well, and, and by the way, victim. even if you're in a tough spot, let's just, yeah. let's just be yeah. clear here. Right. So even if you're in a tough spot, if you, let's just say you're a, a restaurant owner and COVID kind of beat your brains in here. Well, you don't have to look very hard yeah. uh, to find restaurant owners that figured it out. It. Yep. Okay? Yeah. Are they better than you? Are they more resourceful? Because it's it is never a lack of resources. By right. the way, it is almost always a lack of resourcefulness. Yeah, I know a lot of people didn't have a lot of money, but they figured out how yeah. to 
get that restaurant open. I mean, there's a restaurant directly across the street that there will be a line down the street here. There is no in room dining. There is nothing else. They just figured out how to pivot and make it what they needed it to be. I'm not telling you that they are thriving like they were before, but they didn't give up. Yeah. They're warriors. right? Right. And they figured out how to fight and, you have to figure out who you are in those moments and you have to figure out how to evolve and become the best version of yourself because that's, that's when we get defined. Mm. I and mean, when you get hit is when you get defined yeah, yeah. and that next step, that next thing that comes out of your mouth, that next action you take really, really matters and giving yourself the power to say, I can do something different mm-hmm. matters, which leads me to what I was going to say a second ago that if you need a little perspective, Um, remind yourself that I don't care what you're going through right now. There are people, there are 8 billion people on this planet, right? 3 billion of them do not even have access to clean water, right? 3 billion don't even have access to healthy sanitation, right? I mean, you go to a place like Haiti, which we've spent a lot of time in and done a lot of things down there. You will see what real desperation looks like. Yeah, you yeah. will see what real struggle, yeah. real poverty. You know, it, it's it is shocking to the system. And you want to know what a real problem is? That's a real problem. Absolutely, those are real problems, right? Yeah. And your problems—they're literally sitting down there. They would be begging for your worst day. It would be because it'd be their best. Oh, I've got to figure out a way to save my million-dollar-a-year restaurant business. That's your struggle. Yeah, they're trying to figure out how to feed their six-month-old child and find you know not drink water out of the drainage ditch on the side of the road. And they're living in a blue tarp, which is not because they're homeless. The blue tarp is their home. Yeah. Right. Like you see mm. this first hand and you're like, our homelessness is, uh, is their yeah. day to day life. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. if they had a tent, they would be, you know, our, we see these that's home, luxury. That's luxury. And by the yeah. way, this is just normal living there. It is not homelessness. This is just the way that the people live. And it's shocking. Yeah. And when you remind yourself and gain that humility of, of, yeah, I understand your struggle. I understand, but man, people would beg for your problem right now. Yeah. Stand up and but when fight. you're in that low spot, you don't think of shit like that. No, but you're this is, but so this is the mental game. Feeling but this is the mental yourself. game. This is the difference between Correct. being a victim Correct. and not being a victim. Like, Correct. you know what? These guys are right. I'm not a victim. I put myself here. I can get myself out. I'm going to listen to this podcast. I'm going to take this information. I'm going to take a small action today. I'm going to do the the simple things that start moving me in a much more positive direction that I'm going right now. It's, maybe, you know, maybe you can take ownership that you hunkered down a little too early on waiting for the storm to pass because you thought it was going to be short term. And then six months goes by, you're still bleeding. Nine months goes by. A lot of highly, highly, highly successful people when COVID started hitting, they were already pivoting within one or two months. They yeah. were moving quickly, adapting to the environment. And the most successful people know know how to adapt no matter what the environment looks like. I, I will tell you one of the best things that I witnessed firsthand when COVID hit was um, Bedros Kulian with Fit Body Bootcamp, who we all know. Yeah. And then I have a, a buddy down the street that I, that I worked with. He, he, has, he owns a gym, right? And so I worked out with this guy every single morning. You know, um, the, the COVID hit, and I mean within hours, I was – online, on the phone, ripping. You guys have seen the gym back here. I mean, I was. it was very clear that the gyms were not going to open anytime soon. So I started putting... Oh, that uh, was your adaptation, I, right? I, I started, <laughs> that's why you have a gym in the back. That's exactly why, right? Yeah. I mean, I immediately got this thing in here inside of three weeks. But I watched Whoa. Bedros Koulian, who has 800 Fit Body Boot Camp franchise stores, Whoa. right? Yeah. So he's staring in the face of a... Devastation. Giant. Yeah. A lot of them yeah. are yeah. devastation. Yeah. This is the right? Goliath. And I mean, it's all going. Yes. And in 72 hours, think about how fast this is. In 72 hours, he had hundreds of online workouts up that they were recording in his studio the day it hit. And he basically like, everybody in, we're doing this right now. Yeah. Warrior, right? Immediately had that site up to where all of his fit body boot camp not this, just the stores, but their members could then work out from home, instructed the stores to put where your your um, members can come pick up weights, pick up bump dumbbells at the store so that we're, we are working to so that you can stay wow. in business, right? And yeah. I mean, he lost, certainly he lost a, a few, but he lost a very small percentage of stores and membership and everything. I mean, 
a true warrior, right? Yeah. Did, had very little impact on his business. It was impact, but it was not like, oh, we're out of business. And then I watched my buddy who owned the gym up here and it was like devastation. Yeah. Mm. We're out of business. Oh my God, what's all coming to shit? You know, and just played the victim for months and months and months and months. He finally evolved. I mean, it was yes. probably six months in and then, you know, moved his gym. Well, he probably finally got sick of being the victim. Victim. Yeah. And then finally was like, fuck, I got to do something about and this it, And now. you see, yeah. you know, you'll drive around San yeah. Diego here. You'll see how many of these restaurants um, immediately. I mean, there are restaurants here in San Diego, a lot, by the way, that COVID was the best thing that ever happened to them. Yeah. I'll give mm. you, and again, it's the way you look at it. Yeah. You know, we have a, in, in San Diego, we, there's a real challenge with parking because <laughs> there's so many people here, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, these guys immediately got a variance and said, hey, we need to move our restaurant into the parking lot, right? So I said, sure. Mm. And they built entire dining rooms outside, covered. When you drive around, you're going to see it, it's everywhere. And so for many of these restaurants, we had 10 tables inside. Now we have 40 tables outside. Our restaurant is now four times the size it was pr wow. pr prior to COVID. Our business has never been better, right? Now, yeah. clearly, San Diego is a little different. I mean, they can dine outside year-round here. But my whole point of it is, is that it really depends on the way you approach the they problem. They found Absolutely. their way. There is a that, lot of restaurants that went that out of business, but there were many, many that were like, oh, no. We're, st we're staying this in this the, fight. This We're, we're going to fight. And we're yeah. going to fight hard. Move it all outside. Like, yeah. we still got a kitchen in the back. Move it all outside. We're going to not only not really, uh, just sit here and survive, but we are going to thrive. Mm. And there are countless restaurants in this county that their business is better than it ever was prior to COVID because their, the, their capacity is three to five times what it was before. And San Diego, you know, hats off to the, to the, uh, local officials here because they came in right over the top of it and said, too. you know what, this yeah. has been amazing. We're going to let you, you guys invested hundreds of thousands of dollars to put these, to make this happen. We're going to give that, we're going to extend that variance to you for three to five years. So that investment that you made to stay it's in, going to pay off. We're going to, we're going to allow Reward you to continue you. to do this forever. That's, and I was like, that's what a warrior looks like. Well, you know? I mean, let, let's, let's take a look at a situation where there's no accountability. I think everybody's familiar with some people that have had, four or five divorces, but it's always the other person. Right. Oh my God, she or he or she or he. like you're the common denominator in all of your issues, whether it's marriage, whether it's financial, whether mental health, yeah. it doesn't matter. You are making the decision to fill what you've currently filled, just as Kent was alluding to earlier. And it, it and again, you choose to hunker down and wait for the storm to pass. And eventually you might come out of a dark spot, right? You know, a year, two years, two, or you could choose to fight. And we talked about this on a previous podcast, put a lab coat on, try new shit, add new, add new habits. And it doesn't yep. have to be five new things at once. Right. Just change one fucking thing right after you listen to this podcast. It doesn't matter what it is. Change the fact that you're not writing down your, write your goals down. Yeah. And what you want to do. And then action items, backtracking to where you are today. Yeah, Change five minutes in the morning or five minutes in the evening. Again, we already talked about the minute shit. Let's just start there. Do something that's easy to do. Create that one habit. And then now that it is a habit, do that again. Like how many new things have you added over the years into your toolbox in terms oh. of your habits? Like you started working out, then you started Count, eating yeah. healthy, then you meditate, or Countless. then you read, or then you, you know, like what is what but, is a but, typical but, day for you look like in terms of maybe your routines and what? I, yeah, what I, I, I'll, get, I'll get to that one second. I just want yeah. to echo one thing you're saying is uh, is that that what happens when you do these things, which is I, I find fascinating, is again I said this earlier, but the person that you become is really uh, it's wild. Like when you, it when, is. when you watch it how you evolve and then, uh, I, I can't speak for anybody else's experience, but I'll, but I'll speak for mine is that then you learn to actually trust yourself mm, and yeah. trust your instincts and like, Hey man, I did this. I've evolved out of this. I know how to get, a, I, I, that person I have become, I trust myself to, you have that data instinctively now. Instinctively. Yeah you know, I know the path and I keep, now I just keep doubling down on the path. And I, like, that's to me is the single biggest benefit of responding to struggle 
in a, you know, positive and intentional and deliberate way where I'm going to fight. Like I look for the fight now. Like I want mm. that because I know what happens on the other side of that fight is that it, it makes me better. It makes me a yeah. better man, a better leader, a better husband, better father, better brother, brother, better son. It makes me better when I'm, when I got something that I'm trying to rub up against. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I remember when, uh, Do you create your own yeah, like Elias. A, so yeah, like, so speak, I'll like, give you a really good example. Yeah. So Steve Weatherford, um, who's a great guy and, uh, he lived out here for a long time. He and I are close. I'll never forget. There's this thing here in, um, and we, and he and I would go, uh, hiking. He's in Dallas now. Yeah. Isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We would go hiking on a regular basis, right? Former NFL player in amazing shape. I mean, he's basically a Greek God was, yeah. voted, was voted the <laughs> yeah. most fit NFL player. We can, co we can co-sign for everything. Yeah. Ken is I saying. mean, he's yeah. so yeah. proud of his no body. Doubt. He walks yeah. around in a freaking American flag yeah. banana hammock yeah. on the regular. Oh yeah. Loves it. Yeah. And, and by the way, if I, I look too. like that, yeah, yeah, I would <laughs> absolutely. If I, if I, yeah, I was he, six four, four and I mean chiseled yeah, the yeah. way that dude. He's is. made all those good decisions, and he's showing you all yeah, the good I decisions. Mean, and so, yeah. and he's just one of the sweetest, nicest guys you'll ever meet. And so he and I, you know, I've become very, very close over the years, and we work out and, and train all the time together. And he called me up one day. I think it was just like on a, I don't know, maybe a Thursday, and said. Next Tuesday, let's go do the Five Peaks in San Diego. Now, the Five Peaks in San Diego, there's a mountain range out here. and It's not quite like 14 Peaks. Have you seen that documentary? Yes, which is great, right? But this is, your documentary is the Five Peaks yeah, of so San Diego. Yeah, so there's Five Peaks. There's yeah. this mountain range out here that, that uh, there's only, I mean, it's in the thousands. It's not in the tens of thousands. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not in the millions. It's still exhausting. If thousands of shit. people who have ever completed all Five Peaks in the same day. So you're, you're going up the mountain down, up, down, right? And it's, it's significant, right? Yeah. And um, most people try to do it over a two-day period. It's kind of like a thing. Well, he calls it, I was like, I think we should try to do the five peaks all in hours. one day. I'm like, let's do it, right? Nobody's trained for it. You're big <laughs> enough. You can carry me up the <laughs> Nobody's last one done or two it. if needed. We meet out there, him and I, and a handful of other guys. Uh, Brent Skinner was there. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so... Oh, Maybe I remember when that wasn't that long ago. That was just like a, a year, year or two yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. five a.m. Yeah. We get out there, and um, just so happens it's the hottest day of the year in San Diego. <laughs> Clearly, we of course we were of course it's ninety-seven degrees, right? And we out in the, out in the desert, and we do all five peaks, um, a little over twelve hours. I mean, we were just completely exhausted. whipped, exhausted, had run out of water. I mean, dehydrated. I mean borderline dumb i mean i don't even say borderline it was dumb uh, <laughs> but that's what makes it so cool too but getting on the other side of it that sense of accomplishment yes. i can't even tell you what that does to you mentally where you're yeah. just like bro you can do anything my yeah. wife just completed jesse's 29029 yeah Everest was challenge. That, did, was she up in uh, Salt Lake? She did the one in Vermont. Okay, gotcha. And for people that don't know what that is, Mount Everest, the elevation is 29,029 feet. And so he has these races all over the country to where you effectively hike up uh, the equivalent of Everest in 36 hours or less, right? Yeah. And you hike up and then you gondola down. You just don't stop. Well, and we had, we had somebody that we know that did that. I was like, man, that had to get miserable sitting on the gondola going down. Your legs are going to tighten up. Right. He's like, dude, t your legs tighten up yeah. big time. Yeah. And then you got to kind of unlock them a little bit as you start and going back up she got out there and did it, and it was 40 degrees, and it was monsoon conditions, right. pouring <laughs> rain oh, that's in a, the yeah. middle. A, a closer to Mount Everest experience yeah. than in Middle anyways, of the right? night. Yeah. I mean, through yeah. the night, and she and her partner got it done in 30 hours. But imagine, you know, that the, feeling on the, the other pride. side. Like, I can do yeah. anything. Yeah. And the message that's sent to my little girls, like when yeah. they see, you know, their their dad and their mother doing, you know, things like that. And the same is applicable in business. Business and sports and athletics and physical fitness. It's just I, I find it so you're, you're similar. You're training yeah, yeah. your mind, oh, though. Totally, that's all totally. you're really I doing out there. There's so much commonality yeah. in that. And that yeah. when, you, when you, you know, get beat up, and you you take those hits and you and figure you out what you're made out. Yeah. There's a lot of commonality in in, yeah. in physical fitness and sports into business. I mean, I, I I use this analogy all the time. I find people that come into business, and you guys might might see the same thing. You get these people that come into business and they'll 
you know, they basically be like, I mean, I want you guys to think about how, how dumb I would sound if I picked up the phone and I said, hey, Trevor Kale, hey, listen, I've watched every YouTube video out there. I've watched every TikTok. I've listened to every podcast, including yours, and I've read every book about how to go off and start a real estate wholesaling business. I think I'm ready. Just put, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be, I'm going to be a champion. You know, I just, you know, can somebody just start paying me? Yeah. Like, like if I picked up the phone and I called you guys and I said, I've watched every YouTube video. I've listened to Joe Rogan. I've, I've watched, you know, I've, I've done online courses about becoming a great MMA fighter. And I believe I'm now ready. Um, I'm calling Dana White. I'm telling him, hey, man, put me in the put UFC. Me in the yeah, put me in <laughs> I would sound like an absolute moron. Right. Period. Um, clearly, to become a champion, I'm going to have to get in the ring. Yeah. I'm going to have to get Nothing substitutes experience. Punched. Exactly. I go, would go into that expecting to get choked out, knocked out, broken bones, broken yes. arms, you know, black eyes. That is the expectation because, mm. and I'm going through it. Every time I get done with a, uh, a round, I would be coming back. I would have a, a coach in my corner like, hey, man, this is what you did wrong. This is what you need to improve on. And then pushing me back out and doing it. And I would expect to do that over and over and over, tens of thousands of hours mm -hmm. just for the opportunity to become a Great. champion. Yeah. And I think people approach business uh, more times than not, and they just don't expect mm -hmm. to get hit. Yeah. And – if you go into it expecting to get hit, if you go into it, quite frankly, looking for the hit. It's a mental combat sport. It, one That's thousand. really what it is. And you're like, <laughs> I expect to get hit. I expect to get hit yeah. a lot. And when I get hit, I expect to go to a coach. I expect to go to my yes. corner. I expect to figure out what my pivots are going to I expect to get back in there and keep fighting. When you're at a Absolutely. mental low, what's your game plan to get out? Because it will happen. Because it will happen. There's not an MM, MMA fighter on the planet that does not go in there expecting I might get hit. I might get knocked out. Dude. Every one of them. I mean, they Kel, know it. Kel knows last year, you know, I, I was go, I've had my dips and, you know, what, what whatever it is, right? Whether it was COVID and all that, just the bullshit negativity coming and, and I've tuned a lot of that out. I'm like, okay, let's remove the news and all that bullshit. Let's get rid of the negativity. But it was a month before my 37th birthday, and I decided to run 37 miles on, on my 37th birthday. Oh, wow. And, it, it, and I walked out into the office. I said, I'm going to run 37 miles on my 37th birthday. And people turned around and they started laughing. I was like, that's all I needed. I pointed at one dude. I said, that's all I needed, bro. I said, I'm going <laughs> to fucking do it. And so ran 10 times. Kel came out with me on my 37th birthday at midnight. We started at an RV, jumped out at midnight. The second I turned 37, off and running. His birthday's Nine, in July. In July. Live in the Ooh, desert. Well, that's hot. why I also was like, <laughs> it's cool We're that it's at midnight, <laughs> but also I'm dodging 110 degrees. Uh -huh, no doubt. Because I would probably die, uh, especially only training 10 times. Yeah. But, dude, I did it and, and got done at 940 that next morning. And it's, and a lot of people just don't understand. Like, why, why, would, why do you do stuff like that? Because I want to prove to myself as I get older and older, I can get better. I can get greater. Well, it's wildly can, applicable know, in business. And you have yeah. to put yourself in tough situations and in some cases controlled tough situations. So when the unforeseen shit happens that you felt like you didn't have a whole lot of control over, you understand how to overcome those mental battles. So control as many of them as you can. Train your mind to be mentally disciplined when there is adversity. Yeah. So was there adversity out there at 37 miles? Was there adversity climbing the five peaks in San Diego? Of course there was. But guess what? When Kent faces adversity now in his business, he's a little bit more mentally sharp. He's a yeah. little bit more well, mentally I'll give disciplined, you a, bro. A great example of the way this plays out in business. I shared this from the stage this weekend. Is that, you know, we decided to put this big event on. Um, Amazing event, by the way. Yeah, and incredible. This is an annual event. Yep. Skillandescape.com. Is that yeah, yours? Attend scaleandescape.com. Attend scaleandescape.com. You guys, make sure you check out this event. This is yeah, literally, get on the email. you guys all know yeah. that we talk about masterminds, events, and shit, and we've been, been doing this shit for three years almost. This was the best event that we've ever attended. Yeah, I appreciate like, that. Literally, bro. follow this man. Look at what he's doing. Surround yourself with his information. That's why we're doing it. That's why yeah. we're fucking here. Yeah. That's why we're in his office right now. That's why we've seen him from afar. We are literally just telling you to do what we've fucking done. Well, I, I want to tell you guys that that and it was amazing, dude. Thank you, you, you yeah. fucking crushed, dude. So I I came at my team like we're doing this right, and yeah. everybody on my team was like, oh my god, oh my god, how you know, yeah. everybody. And 
clearly when we get on the other side of it. Of course, Kent lost his mind again. He <laughs> says, we're going to do this. Or, you and know. when we get on the other side of it, my team is like, that was amazing. We yes. feel great. And I was like, I just want you to remember this moment yeah. because I, I believed in you yes. more than you believed in you. I was relentless. I knew what was going to happen. Yep. I was the one guy that knew what was going to happen. I knew exactly the way this was going to play out. I, you know, pushed myself in a situation to where we had to perform. Yep. We had to feel the pressure. And you did it. And then this is what it looks like. I mean, yeah. I had this team meeting with my team. I basically sat down. I was like, I want you to remember this because when you think you can't, Sit in yeah. this wind for a second. You had Remember somebody this. tell you, yes, you can. And yeah. I want you to realize that not only yes, you can, you performed at the highest yes. levels of this industry, period. But but there has to be somebody in the organization that does that for people. Uh, that well, pushes them a little further than what they're that, comfortable but, but with. Where to, I was going with it show is them. the benefit yes. of that experience that I personally have had of knowing that outcome. In other words, I know what it looks like. I know what it feels like to be in. On the other side, so on, many on times. the pressure situations, yes. right? Yeah. So you asked me earlier, you know, hey, some that's that's what you get out of it. Mm. It's like that confidence of knowing that if I put myself in these situations, that feeling of accomplishment, that understanding, so that the next time I'm in those situations, and the next time, and the next time, you know what you're I fighting know exactly for. Exactly what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. I was the only guy yeah. that was like, oh, I know what's going to happen. Yeah, uh, you guys don't. I mean, because you haven't experienced it yet, but mm -hmm. I know what's going to happen because I've. <laughs> I understand how we perform under pressure. Bro, we just need is, to feel the pressure. Yes, this is this is very similar because there's a lot of people in it early on in our organization that didn't understand me and Kel and some of the visions that we had. Yeah. Why are you hiring a videographer? We're an accounting firm. Yeah. Why are you going to events? What like we're like what do you sponsor in this like it didn't make sense to them. And all of our employees now for the most part have worked with us four plus years, some of them 10 years. Even recently at, a, at one of our company events, one of them spoke and said, I've been with these guys for like 12 years and I've seen some crazy shit. Every time they say that they were gonna do something, that we're all like, that just doesn't make any sense. A year or two later, it shows its value. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he's like, every single time they wanna make a tweak, change or adjustment, I don't question it anymore. Right. Even if I don't fully understand why, I've just seen how it plays out and how they're 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 just years ahead. Right. In terms of the vision, right? Well, you have the you have the again, that goes back to what I was saying earlier. Like you learn to trust your instincts. I've mm. been in these situations. I, I trust my gut. I know yeah. how to move things forward. Like even if I don't know, you know, I think they would probably find more times than not, it might be surprising to them that Guys like us, we don't always have it all figured out. We just know that I got to move in this direction. We got to push it. We got to push it. I got to. I got to grind it. I got to push it. I got to go in this certain direction. The, the plan will we come. We know together. we want to go not, here, I, but we don't know what. It, yeah. We just start going. Right. Just go. Yeah. So just be. Just because we want to go there doesn't mean we have the entire thing figured out. Have how we're going to get there. Yeah. Just go. But and, when you start going, you'll figure out that next hurdle when it's well, the next I, hurdle. I can't remember who said it. Somebody said it. Oh, I think it was Aaron who said yeah. it. He said it so great. He was like. Uh, at the event, he was talking about that that you climb the mountain, and when you get to the top, it's all of a sudden when you realize that, oh, there's, there's another peak. I couldn't see that mountain because this one was so big, but there's mm. another one to this. And then yeah. you go, and that is, I thought it was so perfect because it's so true. I don't know exactly how I'm going to get where I'm going to get to, but I just know that I got to go in this direction. Yeah. You got to get to your, the top of the mountain it. that you're yeah. facing right now. Right. What is that? It's mountain? one day at a time, one yes. moment at a the time. The universe really does like uh, reward you with those things along the way. Like people laughing at you about your 37 miles, or you throwing this bigger mass, more massive event or launching our mastermind, like doing yeah. these things, right? Like you don't know what the outcome is going to be, but when you just say, screw it. I'm just going to keep pushing it forward. Like people all of a sudden want people by the end of your 37 miles, you started training. I remember you coming in and you're like, dude, this dude does all these long distance runnings. He's telling me to do this and that. And he's, he's like, the universe is kind of like blessing you, right? They're like, no, this is, they're showing you some things along the way. And then all, the of, right these people, people, all of a sudden these people, all of these people want to join, bro. They're like, Hey man, I'll, I'll run the 37 miles with you. I was one of my, Hey, I'll run it yeah. with you. You know, like people are like, dude, I'll, I want to help. I want to help see the finish line of this big event. You know, like the, the mastermind thing we talked about forever. I'm like, screw it. I'm just going to hire John. Come up. We're going to start building it. Dude, yeah. 
We'll put it on your calendar. Four days. Come up. We're going to map this shit out. Now we're like, holy shit, this shit's coming up in like a few weeks. Yeah. People want to be a part of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so if you're that guy, you know, everybody, every organization needs that, right? Or And if you're the only guy in your organization as you're building a team, like you've got to be able to take those big, crazy leaps you got to be able to take those big, crazy ideas and put them into action. And even if your team doesn't believe you or the people around you, they will like, they the will universe eventually. will reward you with like all That's these exactly clues. They will eventually. Because then they'll you're, you're join literally you. training Correct. them yeah. to believe that what they, that they, they're through their own actions, exactly. what is possible. Yes. Right. Exactly. And then because we, uh, somebody has to lead the charge. We understand the power of put me in a tough spot, evolve out of it. The person that I become, um, the person we become as a team, we proved to ourselves that we can do it over and over. And, and then it yeah. just becomes so much more confident. Somebody asked me from the stage the other day, um, how do you become confident? Action. Yeah. That's it. Data. Yeah. Data I take action. Yourself. I get results. Yes. It gives me information. I go yeah. take more action. So you said in the beginning of the podcast, you're like, man, I don't care. I lose it all. I'll go through yeah. bankruptcy. I'll do it all over again. I don't care. Because like you were saying, halfway through the episode, like, I, I trust myself now. Yeah. I've built this trust in myself. So that really is the, to bring it full circle, is yeah. like take an action. You start to trust yourself. Now you can live like Kent's living right now. And he's like, I don't give a shit. Take it all away. I could do it again. You know, I can live free again. I don't care. In, 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 regards, to, in regards to losing everything as well, the fact is, is Kent has served the entrepreneur community for decades now. Yeah. So what this ultimately means is his network is deep. Mm -hmm. He cannot have a penny tomorrow, There's but no be a millionaire again right. by the end of this year. Not even yeah. that, dude. He'd be a millionaire again by within three months, whenever he wanted to. Yeah. Whenever he wrote down on a piece, of, this is the date that is going to happen. And his actions would immediately go towards that. When you serve at a high level and you've done what you've done and you've proven yourself and you've honored the word that you've put out in the marketplace, that's what happens. Amazing people want to yeah. surround themselves with you. And that's what's happened with Kent. You know, he's surrounded by a bunch of amazing people. Yeah. But he's also one of those amazing people for those amazing people in their network as well. So the real question is, is what are you doing right now to serve your network? Yeah. Just in case you get in tough situations. You know, I think a lot of people, even when they're in a struggle or in a tough situation, they're figuring out where they could take to serve yeah. themselves. That's a good point. Right? Yeah. Like, get outside of yourself and see where you could serve and watch the universe just do its thing. Yep. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, and, and you and do true. that at a high level, everything else will figure itself out. There's no doubt. You no know? doubt. You are, I mean, we've all heard it. You are a reflection of the people that you surround yourself with. And if you lead with, you know, being a servant to them, helping them, figuring out how to bring value to somebody else's life, how to inspire, how to push, how to look. And, and, and somebody's sitting out there right now and like, well, dude, I'm, I'm beat up. How, how can I serve? Very simple. Demonstrate what it looks like to fight through struggle. Mm, yeah. That's what you do. You're serving your family. You're mm. serving your friends. Oh. You're inspiring them. You're showing them. You're demonstrating what it looks like to overcome. I can't think of anything bigger. Yeah. Then to that's a great way to serve your like, watch me. Yeah. yeah, I'll show you how this is done. So the next time you're struggling, you'll know exactly what to do. This will mean one of the best gifts I will ever give you. Just pay attention to what I do right now, mm. and then all of a sudden, that's a. I mean, you can I, make believers out of non-believers just by. I, you being I can't the imagine a greater gift that you can mm. give to somebody than than to show them. Don't talk about what's it. What's possible? Yeah. Show. I'm, I'm going to show you how yeah. this is done. I'm going to mm. show you what, what I'm capable of doing. And by virtue of doing that, I'm going to in turn give you the power that you understand yep. that you can do the same. That mm. was literally like, we was talking about this the other day. Trip, Trip was talking about in this episode. He's like, man, I was in a real rut, you know, like, and I, and I, it was visible. Right. And I was like, and I pulled him in one day. I'm like, bro, what do you need me to do? Do you mean take on half of the social media? Like, let's do it. Right. And he's like, yeah, yeah dude, maybe, you know, so we started doing that for a while. And, uh, and I'm like, you know what, dude, the best thing I can do for him right now is, and he's done it for me too at times. Yeah. I just gotta, I just gotta fucking kick ass. I just gotta be doing shit to move all this thing forward. And that's going to bring him out of whatever needs to bring out of. Right. And, uh, so I'm like, screw it. So I start jumping in. I'm, I hire some coaches. I hire some marketers. We start building this whole thing. And like, he's just, and he's over there still like building our systems and our process. And you tell he's beat down. And then, and then, uh, like, I don't know what happened, man, but like just a rising whatever. tide raises all ships. That's it's what like, happens. Man, you can't just, hang out in that yeah, headspace 
for long. Yeah. We all yeah. go through it. Yeah. But yeah. you literally well, cannot be in that headspace yeah. long when you're surrounded by people who are inspiring you. Yeah. Once yeah. all these things started coming together and our, our processes and our systems that he'd been working on are built and all of our marketing stuff's being built and all these things started like coming to a head and it's like, boom, all of a sudden there's this new life, right? Yeah. In, yeah. In both well, of us, right? Well, the, really? Here, here's the difference also. Like even when I, even if I hit the skids for a minute, I still show up every fucking day. Every oh, fucking yeah, day. Yeah, absolutely. Kel was, Kel was on his, he, yeah, he was pushing a lot of important things forward. And I was on the back end right. focusing on our systems and processes and expanding and hiring yeah. and trying to grow. And that was the stress of mine. And I had just had COVID not that long ago. So my energy was just totally fucking zapped. And like, I was just mentally at a low spot because Brain I'm dog. like, this yep. isn't fucking normal. Like, usually I'm a go go. Like, I get up early, I move my body, I'm mentally fucking fresh as fuck. You know, and I just didn't feel that, yeah. but I still showed up yeah. even despite, yeah. you know, and, and really that's a separator also, but Kel showing up in the way that he showed up. I'm like, fuck, he's moving some shit forward. He's moving shit forward. And what that reminded, I'm like, I need to fucking do something right now to fucking take control of my mind. So what did I do within three months of me kind of being a little funk, still doing my shit, still handling my business, still hiring, still doing the systems and processes. I'm like, I need to fucking bite off something hard. Yeah. I need to fucking bite off something hard that gives me fucking daily intent, daily focus, things that I have to fucking check off every single day that I know will serve me. So 75 hard, January 1st, right? Like if you're at a low spot, you're probably at a low spot because you know deep down you're not really living up to your fucking potential. Right. So look around and figure out what's the next fucking difficult thing that you could do to build a little bit of confidence. Yeah. And Just do that. And by serving yourself, that is sometimes serving other people, right? Like, I've got to go be better. I've got to yeah. push these things forward. And that's going to be so oh, that, that, that was basically I, one, just one, to what, yeah, that, that, that was a story. That just validated exactly yeah, you can't what Ken be, was talking about. Like, right. be the inspiration to the people around right. you. And there's nothing, there's no greater gift right. than the people that you say that you love and that you surround yourself with yeah. than performing at your peak level. Don't don't reduce your frequency to try to be with them in their in their dark spot. Like, yeah, you could put your hand out and try to help them, but lead by example. I mean, really it, what look, it comes it, down to. Yeah. You, you brought it up, but think about it. Think about how easy it would be like if you're Frisella or even Waylon or any of yeah. those guys, the two, um, and we both know, or we all know that they're they're great guys as well, right? I mean, they're they're hardcore, but they are also some of the sweetest individuals you'll ever meet, right? Yeah. Um, but how incongruent it would be for them to tell you to get go get in shape and to work out, and, yeah. and then you see them at an event, you're like, dude, you've become a fucking badass. What yeah, the fuck is slow. going on here, right? Yeah. yeah. It isn't about talking about it. Yeah. It's about being about it mm -hmm. right? and when you you know you see Frisella posting his pictures and he's getting himself into a, amazing shape or you look when Sean did 75 hard and all of a sudden I mean millions of mm -hmm. people watched those right? individuals that dim they are literally demonstrating mm. this is what it looks like our like Jesse Itzler think about yeah. it like Jesse Itzler could talk about having the great you know but Dude, that guy goes off. If you follow him on Instagram, you'll see him. He will go run a hundred mile race like you and I are walking around and getting a cup of coffee. It is <laughs> wild. Do it. Yeah, hundred. And so then the wild. next day, he's gonna probably go out. The next day, he'll run. be like, "Oh yeah, I'm, I'm just out my friends. We're gonna go. We're gonna go hike a, up into the mountains yeah, and yeah. go do a cold plunge. It's 22 yeah. degrees. I'm like, yeah. this guy. I mean, <laughs> they're incredible. demonstrating. Yes. yes, right. It is not about you. You can talk about it. Yeah. Or you can be about it. And there's a lot of lip service that goes on out there. And yeah. whether it's in business, physical fitness, it doesn't matter. The reality of it is, is the greatest gift you can give to, to yourself and to somebody else yeah. is to Put step up. Put some action behind it. Step up. Start doing. Just start, start doing. doing. Yeah. And you may not have it all figured out. In all likelihood, you won't have it all figured out. But you certainly know that putting yourself into more of those situations that are exciting the imagination and bring, you know, bringing yeah. life, breathing life into mm -hmm. what you're trying to do Forcing um, you to perform at a high level. Yeah. It, it matters. It, yes. It matters. And it's showing you what's possible. What situations lately have you put yourself in where you had to perform at a high level? Right. Yeah. It's true. And if you're looking around and you're like, damn, I'm just doing the same thing over and over. And I'm so used to doing it every single day that this is no longer a challenge. Now I'm in a low spot mentally. 
I mean, you think about wax. Weird. Think about think about challenge. this guy. I mean, yeah. every time you turn around, there's another another fucking brand, another like brand, good, another good, business, good, good, another good. something. I mean, this guy is constantly. I know. It's I mean, impressive. he would never. Very impressive. He could easily just sit back and never have to do anything else. Yeah. You know, right. But it's constantly spinning out brands of pushing. Like, oh my pushing, god! Like one pushing, a month yeah. pushing. And you're right. like, good god. Because of the, exactly what we're talking about. Yes. Here. It's doable, and it's the things that help define who he is as a person, mm -hmm. uh, he understands like, hey, when I have to perform, when we have to open up this, you know, truck land or, or the car like dealership. Like he says, he's or, biting off more than he can chew. He does it all the time. figures it out. And yeah. so, I mean, there's a lot, of, a lot of truth in what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. This is just the way high performers operate. Yes. Sure. Yeah. And we heard, Absolutely. you know, Ed talking this way, like one more. Like all he's talking about on his speech. It's not the big shit. One more. He's just saying like, one more. Hey, whatever it is, whatever you're doing, it is, one more. One more call. One, one more, more email. Rep. One, one more rep. Call, whatever one more it is. Yeah, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. And that is literally how it is done. It yeah. sounds super cliche, but it is one thousand percent the truth. It just is. start trying it. Exactly. Give it time, mm -hmm. and the result will show up. Amen. And then when you have the data, you just want to add one more to everything yeah. that you're fucking doing in life, because. When you see the response of good decisions over a long period of time, it makes you want to make more good decisions. Absolutely. You Before know, we so. end, I got to ask this question, though, because I wanted to ask it earlier. Okay, go ahead. You, you talk about watching your dad be an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur dad. There's a lot of entrepreneur dads listening, right? And so we're role modeling things for our kids. But you actually went one step further and actually went into business with your dad. Mm -hmm. And I've wondered that because I got a 21-year-old son now and he's in sales. And I'm like, man, I wonder if I should start a business with him or do something with him, right, and help push that along. Or if I should be like, you know, no, you go do it on your own. Figure out like I did. Like, what do you think? Yeah. Because you've been down that road would be more valuable. That, well, I think yeah. it's, I think it's a, a blessing and a curse. I think it can go either way, right? So uh, I'm the oldest of three sons. Um, and... In more ways than probably either of us would be comfortable even mentioning, we are uh, very, very much alike. Like we are very much the same person, right? Yeah. Very similar personalities, very similar the way we go after things. And so there's a reason why I'm out here <laughs> in business by myself. And there's a reason why him and my two brothers run their operations back in Memphis, Tennessee, right? Is because... Yeah. Uh, it was, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah. Uh, it was, um, I feel extremely, um, uh, I, 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 there's a lot, a lot of gratitude I have for, for the education I got in business mm -hmm. from yeah. my father and all those experiences, right? Uh, you don't get to a place where you're running a $1.8 billion a year company when you're 30 years old without, you know, having learned a few things yeah. from your father on yeah. the way up, yeah. right? He certainly put me in the situations, gave me the opportunities and mentored me to become a, a great business leader. And then, uh, but at some point I had to spread my wings and get away from it yeah. and do what I needed to do. And when the larger company bought us down in Boca Raton, Florida, and I, uh, and I kind of really became my own man there, then us working together was no longer going to be possible. Right. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I was, I had just evolved. Yeah. Um, but I don't look back at it at all without anything, but, um, admiration. A, a ton of gratitude. Now, with that being said, uh, it was brutal. Yeah. Like we were, we were not friends in the office. Right. And yeah. it, it, if you do not understand, look, I'm sure a lot of fathers and sons, um, when they, they go into business together, they, they've got it all figured out. We, we have it figured out in a way what the relationship, the relationship is, is unique. Yeah. Right. Um, Meaning that um, we we understand that when we're in the workplace, business is business. When we're out of the workplace, personal is personal. Some people say that, right. but they don't. And, and we have people, it makes it. people yeah. uncomfortable how yeah. brutal we are in. Yeah. But like, I don't give a shit. Like, I, this is the way this is happening, right? And it is. And, and we, I, I learned a lot about. Uh, the inner dynamics of, of having a family inside of the operation. My son uh, works inside of the the operation, REI Nation, back in Memphis. There's a lot of there's a lot of really positive things about having your family. Uh, you know, right? My two daughters will definitely come up in this business. You know that I'm in right now, if they choose to. Yeah. Um, I'm you know 100 grooming my two daughters to be entrepreneurs right now. Uh, my young daughter was at the event working, oh, yeah. and then she owns a couple small businesses at 16. My Eight-year-old daughters out on the out here uh, selling Girl Scout cookies out in front of our house every day. I mean, like, 
there's a lot of lessons to showing your kids and bringing yeah. your kids into business and making sure they understand the way the value of the dollar, the way, you know, giving them Hard good, work, good financial yeah. literacy, at very, very young age. All that is super, super positive. Um, but to work with your fam family in a, um, you know, boss and employee type situation requires a great deal of discipline and yeah. a great deal of understanding on, on what the rules of that game are. It can be super uh, beneficial when it comes to grooming amazing entrepreneurs and, and, but it also can, can be kind of hard on the relationship. I will tell you, you know, I look back and, you know, Ed Milet and I were talking about this at one point and there's a massive ripple effect. Yeah. And I just want you to keep this in mind, you know, is that, that, you know, my father left, um, he was in the grocery industry and he walked out of a, a, a company that he was extremely well thought of. He was a, an executive at a grocery chain in Dallas, Texas, and he went and started his own grocery chain and convenience stores when I was I want to say 12 or 13. Um, and so then we started, then I, I basically grew up in grocery stores at that point and started working. And then you fast forward to now and you know, all that, that I've had the privilege of accomplishing in my life and the millions and millions of people that I've gotten through social media and trainings, opportunities to play an impact and a role in their lives. If you really think about it, you can, you go back and you start connecting dots. Yeah. There are millions of people mm. around the world that are impacted by, you know, the trainings and messaging that we put out. There's tens of thousands that have literally bought our programs, yeah. right? Yeah. There are hundreds that we have personally coached, thousands that we have personally coached into success. The ripple effect, and, the, the, yeah. and none of that happens if he doesn't walk out of that Grocery store. Grocery store and go and start his own. own thing. Yeah. Because I watched it. The power. Yeah. Like I watched him do it when he was. The Through mo action. The but moment he became an entrepreneur. He led. I he became led, an entrepreneur. He led and yeah. showed you what true potential is. And it's just that was. simple. Yes. He showed and you so what the potential is. Understand that you're, you know, your children are watching you right yes. now and you're probably grooming entrepreneurs by default. Yeah. yeah. And they will whether model you, know, you whether yeah. you, whether you like it or not. They were model. Yeah. And somebody's going to go on to change the lives of thousands of people because of the things you're doing right now. They're watching. I love that. Yeah, I love that, man. Thanks for answering that. Yeah, absolutely. How, how, how would people connect with you, support you? Is, is it, you know, is it kentclothier.com? Kentclothier.com or, okay. or at kentclothier on Instagram. What or, are some of the courses and things that you could help people out with? We teach. If they're just kind of wanting to look into what you're up to, what you're doing, absolutely. whether it's real estate, whether it's business, kind of talk. Look, about if you're a high level CEO, yeah, like the boardroom um, stuff, I, I personally work with some really high level CEOs on, on yes. trying to optimize, right? And we can definitely vouch for that. If you, you know, are a, uh, if you are a high level, uh, real estate entrepreneur, our mastermind, the, the boardroom mastermind is the most well thought of and respected real estate mastermind in the country. And that's exactly why easier accounting chose to partner up with Kent and, and sponsor a hundred percent of those events. We don't do anything that yeah. is you not know. the, you know, the I mean, best it's the of best, best of the best, best of the best right. of the best right. of the best. So I, if there's a standard that's set, it's Kent's standard and everybody else is trying to live up to right. it. I yeah. don't, that's a fact. Yeah. yeah. We just, I, yeah. and, I, and so. I don't say that, you know, in any kind of coy way, I'm saying that because it's just it's simply factual. the way we operate. It's right? factual. And so just like the event this weekend, yes. like I just don't know how to do anything half fast. Yes. Right. It's going to be the best. Oh. And, the, and then, um, our education, real estate worldwide, which, uh, again, you can get there by going to kentclothier.com or you can go to reww.com and we, we educate, um, brand new real estate entrepreneurs or experience. I mean, you can buy our courses, Doesn't buy our trainings, buy our coaching. Yeah. We can teach you, take you through the entire process. I mean, yeah. I think there's 11 or 12, uh, certifications in there. You can, our, we have coaches that are doing hundreds of deals all over the country that will actually get on the phone with you and coach yes. you through the program. So you name it, we got you surrounded, and none of that is what you want to do. And all you want to do is just buy houses. I mean, we just yeah. happen to own the literally the best turnkey operation in the country called REI Nation, and you can go and you know just buy houses from us, and we yeah. will um, manage the entire process there. So, so if you're at that dark spot that we talked about, wanting to make a shift in life, you're asking yourself some questions. Maybe you're listening to this podcast for a reason. Mm -hmm. Go to go to Kent's website, check it out, poke around. Maybe you can find that new passion or that new thing Amen. that might light your fire again. You know, but you have to again find that through action. Yeah, by actually visiting the site, poking around, seeing seeing if there's something that he could do uh, to serve you with wherever you're at right now in your journey, whether it is a real estate business or whatever it may be. So this is a man that we highly, highly look up to. 
that we're honored to surround ourselves by. And this is an individual, if you have the opportunity to do any business with them, we recommend doing it because we've done it, you know? <laughs> so we recommend doing what we're doing because ultimately it's serving us, right? And that's what we're doing is just literally telling you what we're doing. You choose whether or not you kind of want to walk those, walk those steps. We're, we're making the blueprint on how you slowly level up in this entrepreneur game and surround yourself with individuals like Kent. Support these individuals, go to their events, you know, become a familiar face, you know, learn how to start doing business with them on a high level. And by default, you know, you're doing something right. If you're having a podcast in Kent's office, <laughs> Amen. So Spot on. Can listen to us, you know, so I love it. guys, uh, we appreciate you tuning in as always. Kent, we appreciate you taking the time out of yeah, your day well, to be on the show. To have you guys. It was, uh, it was amazing. The, the whole weekend was amazing. The podcast was amazing. And we can't thank you. Yeah, to. looking forward so, to all the next events oh, yeah. too that we're yeah, a yeah. part of. Kent's gonna see our face more than he probably like. <laughs> yeah, he's got us. For I love this. it. Yeah. So, guys, we hope you enjoyed today's episode. Share it with somebody that you love, that you care about, that could benefit from it. Other than that, kick ass. Have a great day. Peace.